Oh, hey. Keith Munslow here. Just sitting by the fire here at the Empire Review compound, playing a little music for myself. It's a weird time of year, you know? Christmas is over, New Year's is coming, and what even is New Year's this year? What's 2021 going to hold for us? Ah, I'm just not feeling myself. I wish I could shake off these blues. You know what? I'm going to take a stroll over to the sparkling beatniks wing of the Empire Review compound. I'll see what they're up to. That might cheer me up. Wow. It's been a while since I headed over this way to the part of the compound where the beatniks all live. I always forget what a hike it is. Okay, what's behind this door? Ah, darn it. Broom closet. Hey. Okay, what's this door? Whoa! I forgot about this. The room of a hundred kittens. Oh, you're so cute. All right, back inside. Back inside. Come on. Come on. Okay, okay. I think we're starting to get into the Beatniks dorms now. Hello? Anybody home? Oh, jeez. Sorry, Tom. I'll come back another time. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Here's Stu's room. Hey, Stu. What are you up to? Keith! Don't see much of you over here in the beatnik wing. Yeah, I just... I needed to change things up a bit. I've been kind of in a funk since Christmas. Oh, you're not having a good interregnum? A good what? A good interregnum. You know, the time in between. Oh, uh... Well, no. It's been a little tough, actually. That's too bad. I've been using my interregnum to work on a new act, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well... You know, I've been wanting to push my puppet work even further, and so I've been learning ventriloquism. Hmm. Check it out. You remember Stapley, right? Uh, I didn't have time to make a new puppet. Oh, you, yeah, that's your, your sentient stapler puppet. Nice to see you again, Stapley. Hey, great to see you too, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been working on a ventriloquism act with him. Watch this. Hey, Stu, what do elves do after school? Oh, gee, Stapley, I don't know. They do their gnome work. What? Gnome work. I, I, gnome work, Keith. Get it? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I, right. I should probably get going. So here's another bit. Let oh, me just all right. grab my water here. Oh, you don't have to. Uh, all right. So, Stapley, what are your New Year's resolutions? <laughs> Okay, I should. I really should take off. I gotta just. Okay, bye, Keith. Well, good news. I should have this ready for the, the stage by the time we're back meeting in person. That's that's great news, too. Good luck with that. Nice to see you, Stapley. <laughs> well, Stu's doing fine, I guess. What was that word he used? Interregnum. I've never heard of that. Never heard of interregnum, Keith? Oh, jeez, Jimmy, you startled me. No, I've never heard of interregnum. Have you? Uh, yeah, Keith, of course. The time between. The time between the holidays. That time when you don't really know what day it is. 
You're subsisting on a diet of cheese and leftovers, and you're filled with uncertainty about the future. Interregnum. Has this always been a thing? <laughs> Keith, did you not pay attention in history class? One of the most famous of Calvin Coolidge's speeches was the first interregnum address on radio. Here, I've got it saved to my YouTube favorites. I'll play it for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. As we stand on the precipice of another Christmas holiday season, a season filled with the excitement and wonder in the eyes of children, of togetherness and family, and the anticipation of the coming new year, many have asked, and what of the in-between, the nameless middle ground? The period of sloth and ennui that punctures our seasonal celebration like an errant nail in the tire of a horseless carriage. What indeed. Are we as Americans going to let these five days lay idle, even as we lay idle, turkey fattened and half drunk on bootleg gin? Do we simply discard these 120 hours? Should the greatest nation on God's earth ask for more from a season flush with holidays? I say, as your president, sure, why not? But not without moniker. We are a country built on abundance and avarice and excess. And so in these times of plenty, America yearns for more. And why? Because we believe that we deserve it. And so today, my fellow Americans, I am proud to honor your cries for more. I, Calvin Coolidge, noted good time boy and man about town, hereby decree that henceforth America shall have a new holiday, five whole days to bridge this great chasm this yawning divide, a period of unmatched national whoopee, filled with jazz and cigarettes and sweatpants and slubbery and sloth, and we will call it Interregnum. So stand proud, America, or slouch proud, and know that your elected leaders will always seek to expand, name, and codify days that you are already wasting, because we the people love a good time. We demand a good time, and a good time we shall have. I literally have never heard of this holiday that everyone has been celebrating for a hundred years. Wow, Keith. I mean, I remember many an interregnum as a child. Looking around at my half-broken presents, dreading the return to school, filled up on crappy chocolate coins. The good times. Didn't you ever sing the interregnum song as a kid? I remember it even now. All right, boys and girls. Now, to wrap up today's festivities, Mrs. Jacoby's second grade class will sing the Interregnum song.
wow, I, I've just been totally missing this whole tradition for my entire life? Seems that way, Keith. Well, I'm about to go run the Interregnum 5K out in Chapachet. See ya. Bye, Jimmy. Good luck. I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't understand. How could everyone know about this, but not me? Ah, oh, here's Brian's door. Maybe he can help me make sense of this. Hey, Brian. It's Keith. Are you home? Hey, Keith. Have you seen my gingerbread house yet? Uh, no. You just opened the door. Oh, is that it right behind you? Holy crap, Brian. That's amazing. Thanks, man. Since Christmas is finally over, I might start eating it today. God, I don't, I don't know if I could. It's so beautiful. It's like a whole Victorian mansion. And look at the little people. They're so realistic. Wow. I feel like they could spring to life at any moment. Father Frosting, thank you for visiting me at my home. You're most welcome, Miss Confection. What has been troubling you and your family? Father, I fear a demonic force might have hold of this gingerbread house. Miss Confection, do you know of the building's history? Yes. It was built on an ancient Halloween candy burial ground. Misfortune has followed the house ever since. This is the old Reese's house as well, yes? Yes, where Mr. Reese's hacked his family to pieces after they got their chocolate in his peanut butter. A tragedy. But the church doth forbid such decadence. And my daughter found this in the basement. A candy corn. The devil's favorite treat. All the other gingerbread houses nearby are so calm and festive. But something is wrong with this house. We decorate our roof with gumdrops, frost our lawn, and hang up our nicest M&Ms. But I still can't shake the feeling something is wrong with this house. I fear you may be right. I sense a demonic presence. One that threatens to tear this house apart. I must perform a blessing before it is too late. Eat this holy necker wafer as I perform an incantation. Three thousand two three seventy five degrees Fahrenheit. Mix the butter, brown sugar, molasses, and baking soda. Bake for fifteen minutes or until dough is firm. They arrive! Get back, Oh, man. That was so delicious. Thank you for sharing that with me, Brian. Thanks, Keith. Happy Interregnum. Happy Interregnum to you, too, Brian. See ya. Big Well, at least I got a little snack. I guess that's part of Interregnum? Mm hmm. Oh, here I am at the Empire Review Communal Kitchen. Maybe there's more stuff to snack on. Looks like a lot of beatniks hanging out. Cooking, they got the radio on. And that last set wrapped up with Lizzo singing Exactly How I Feel. This is Chris Kramer with you till 5 o'clock, and we'll be right back after this message. The all-new, now that's what I call, Interregnum. This two-CD set features all of your favorite Interregnum carols. Enjoy these favorites and so many more. You better not pout, you better not pout, you better not pout, you better better not pout. All you children better not pout. God rest ye merry gentlemen, every night feels the same. It 
Is it Tuesday or Wednesday now? I've hardly done a thing. Mm -hmm. Enjoy classics like these. Silent night, regular night, cold and dark, standard night, insignificant, won't remember, it's the 28th of December, sleep in a regular way, sleep in a Enjoy classic songs such as Come they told me ba -ra -ba -bum -bum. I'll do that tomorrow ba -ra -ba -bum -bum. I have such chores to do ba -ra -ba -bum -bum. Rock out to your new favorites like I gave you my heart, but the very next day you returned it for store credit. But the store credit was only good if you shopped in the same department. Send an envelope with check or money order to Absurdly Specific Records, Los Angeles, California, and celebrate the interregnum tradition. Additional shipping and handling. This is so weird. It's like interregnum is suddenly everywhere and I just never noticed it before. Oh, looks like Dave's got something coming out of the oven. Ooh, my cake is done. Wow, a cake. That's a lot of effort. You must have baked it for someone you really care about. Yeah, the ducks in the pond, they're looking so hungry. You're not actually supposed to give them bread, so I made them this cake. <laughs> oh, well, it's good to make things for animals or people you really care about, especially if a certain meaningful day is coming up. You said it, Ayla. Earth Day will be here before you know it. Come get some, duckies! <laughs> It's December 28th, and I can hardly wait for the party that my friends are sure to throw. But as the day grows longer, I begin to wonder if anybody here would even know. It's my hey, birthday! guys! This duck has a candle in its mouth! Oh, guys, keep it down. Tina and I are about to record. Oh, awesome. Rachel and Tina are about to shoot a new episode of their YouTube cooking show. Maybe I'll get something good to eat when it's done. In the Kitchen with Rach and TT. On today's show, the ladies reach all the way into the back of the fridge to tackle those boring holiday leftovers and turn them into something new and exciting. Let's see what's going on in the kitchen. Hi folks, welcome to another edition of In the Kitchen with Rach and TT. You're joining us on a very special day. That's right. Today we're going to break you out of your soup and sandwiches slump and show you how to turn that ho-hum platter of leftovers into a whole boy meal that will keep your family from turning on each other. Now I've already started baking one of my favorite dishes passed down to me from my Nana, who got it from her Nana in the old country. It's called Nana's Special. I can't actually tell you exactly how it's made without violating a peace treaty written in 1827 between two warring clans, but I can tell you it involves a half cup of everything you have and a can of cream of mushroom soup. Oh, I can't wait! 
Well, folks, first up, I've got a super quick, easy snack for when the kiddos get the hungry horrors. Mm. It's a deep dish veggie dip, and I make it every year. Oh, it's my favorite. It's got simple ingredients that you probably already have in the house, but you can substitute anything you like. Rachel, can you please help me chop some of these red bell peppers? You got it, TT. Mmm, Rachel, I smell something delicious coming from the oven. Right? That's my Nana's special. It's almost ready. Again, I cannot reveal the exact temperature or cooking time without dishonoring the Colony clan. But your nose will tell you when it's ready. Hmm, not quite. I'll set a timer for another minute or so. Now folks, it's important to remember to stir thoroughly and blend it all real good. Veggies are done. Awesome, thanks. You can just plop them in here. Would you mind slicing the cheddar and pepper jack for me? You bet. Cooking is extra fun at this time of year because I get to use all my new kitchen toys. Ooh, yay! Oh, just need to blend some pesto real quick. This looks really festive when I swirl it into the rest of the dish. Yeah, I tell you, that is just a party on a plate. Just a sexy, sexy dip. Really? You think it's sexy? Yeah. Yes, like all great chefs of our time, I am sexually aroused by food rather than by my fellow humans. Um, I mean, I love mashed potatoes, but it's like platonic, you know? Hmm. Rach, I think you may have some issues with intimacy that we should- Oh god. Oh god, I knew I shouldn't have mentioned the cream of mushroom. Oh, I've said too much. Oh, the ancestors are angry. Well, that's it for this week. Join us next time when we show you how to cook an entire day's meals with no functional appliances. I'm so sorry. See you then. Wow, my appetite seems to have disappeared. Hey, Keith. Don't see you around this way too often. Oh, hey, Kelly. How's your interregnum going? Well, now that I know I'm having it, it's uh, it's okay, I guess. How's yours going? Oh, it's good. I'm just making up a cocktail to serve when we watch Point Break later tonight. This is the weirdest holiday ever. Tell me about it. I was just thinking about an interregnum a few years back when I almost lost it. Oh, I can't take any more of this. It's so dark outside. We promised each other we wouldn't do this. I just can't take it. Interregnum is so indistinct. I can't watch another non-fictional Animagic special. I draw the line at the history of detergent. Ah! Surveillance capitalism bot, pause music. Where are my glasses? Huh? I got a text from my mom, I need to read it, and it's the holidays. You all know that high fructose corn syrup makes my vision extra blurry. I can't see the tiny writing on my phone without my glasses. Hey, it's gonna be okay. We've got you covered. It's interregnum, and we've got nothing but time. Time to make. We have candy canes. We have soda bottle bottoms. We have a glue gun. It's glasses making time. We can do this. If you can dream it, you will manifest it. I read that in the fine print of a browser pop-up ad for anti-gout medicine. That can't be an accident. This was meant to be. Right here, in this space, we can create a miracle. Guys, I love you. I love us. But I can't let myself believe in this. Not now. I've been burnt too many times before by hot glue. Yip it!
Tell Lepton! Gasp! Could it be? Yeah! I'll be coming round the collider when I come. I'll be coming round the magloop when I come. I'll be slipping through the double slits. I'll be jumping between the orbits. I'll be collapsing from superposition when I come. Wow! It's Schrodinger's cowboy. He's really real? I thought that he was just a story for gifted and talented kids. I ain't no story, missy. I'm as really real as real can really be. All you gotta do is look for me, and I'll appear. I think I hear him at the front door. Yee-hoo! That's it! Don't be shy, just try to take my measure. No, he's up on the roof. Ha-ha! He's in the fridge! Wrong again! Front door, I'm sure of it. Closet. Oh, you pesky cowboy. <laughs> Beg your pardon, folks. I surely startled you with my spooky action at a distance. That's all right, Mr. Cowboy. You've actually shaken me out of my doldrums. Here I was feeling ambivalent about things. What things? You know, the state of the world. Ah, you're fixating on the teetering, I'll wager. The what? Now, don't deny it. Your melancholic Inri, the back and forth and twixt one and to other. Y'all know that creepin' feeling. It's where we're all living, somewhere between reverie and nightmare. Alertness and stupor? Dread and relief? Democracy and fascism? That's right, little doggies. It's just the way of things. I've been oscillating out in them fields for an eternity, and that's long enough to know a thing or see squared. You got that interregnum spirit. But don't you fret. Just stretch out your legs and stew in it. It'll pass, sure as prunes. Thanks, Schrodinger's cowboy, I guess. Don't mention it, partners. I'll just let myself out. Oh, and your glasses? They're pushed up on your noggin, little beatnik. Wow. I was searching forever for my glasses, and it turned out that I always had them, right here with me. It's just like in the stories. Yeah, it's a real, live, interregnum coincidence. Um, high five, I guess? Why not? This day is not getting less strange, let me tell you. It never does this time of year. Well, you know, I hope you appreciate the privilege you have just to enjoy your interregnum. Not everyone gets this time off. I remember when I worked in retail, it was actually the worst of all the December holidays. Really? Why is that? Because every nutcase and his brother are rushing back into the stores to do their returns. Hey, can I help you? Yes, hi. Uh, Jordan, is this the returns desk? Yes, it is. Okay, great. I would like to return this coffee maker, please. Oh, the Technovore Mocha Master Grind and Brew 14 cup touch screen programmable coffee machine. Didn't work out for you? Oh, no, no, no. It's great. I love it. Oh, was it faulty? Was something broken? No, it's in perfect shape. Oh, got two of the same thing, huh? No. So, you want to return it? I want to return it. I can't live with it in my house. Well, okay. Let's get that started for you. She would just love for me to have coffee every morning from this thing. Sorry? Auntie Carol. Screw you, Auntie Carol. Are you okay? Oh, 
She knew I'd be there every morning, coming downstairs to a perfectly brewed cup of coffee, sipping it, reading the paper, doing the crossword puzzle, petting the cat, all with that delicious freaking coffee. Oh, she knew. I mean, it sounds like a good gift for you. It's the perfect gift for me, Jordan. Okay. It's all part of her plan, Jordan. Plan? Yeah, it's all part of her pattern. Huh. The year was 1998. Uh, what's happening now? The bare naked ladies were regaling us with their seminal hit one week. Saving Private Ryan was crushing the box office, and America was falling in love with Jen, Joey, Pacey, and Dawson. Sir, there's a line starting. And I, I was a fresh-faced college grad just starting out in the world. The holidays arrived, and I arrived to my family's Christmas Eve celebration with my Yankee Swap gift in hand. A hilarious far side calendar, and I was ready to reap my prize in return. Speaking of which, can I just get this return done for you? And I drew the highest number in the swap. The only person who could get to choose after me was the number one. And who do you think drew the number one, hmm? Um, Auntie Carol? Auntie Carol! Right. And that year, the most prized Yankee swap gift was amazing. A Generation 1 leopard print Furby. I wanted it. We all wanted it. It was the big hotness that year, and when my turn to choose finally came around, I snagged it. And then last came Auntie Carol. She looked around at all of us, and I stood there, clutching the Furby as close to me as I could. She locked eyes with me. She could tell how much I wanted it, and I could tell how much she wanted it. Everyone was watching us. She walked toward me slowly, looking me in the eye the whole way. She stood in front of me for a minute, and then she leaned down to me put her hand on my shoulder, and said softly in my ear, Merry Christmas, dear. And then she took the far side calendar from my cousin sitting next to me, leaving me with the Furby. Wow, that was really kind of her? Kind? Kind? Ever since that day, I've had to live with that guilt. And to make it worse, she keeps giving me gifts that show how well she knows me. How can I live with that kind of consideration? It sounds like she just really loves you. (laughs) Yeah, I'll say. Cool. Let's get this finished. Okay, so do you want cash or store credit? A store credit. I'll be getting Auntie Carol an Ember Programmable Temperature Control Coffee Mug. (laughs) She's going to love it. Live with that, Auntie Carol! Wow, it's like everybody has an interregnum story. This is crazy. Oh, here comes Brian again. Hey, Brian, thank you so much again for that gingerbread house. That was delicious. Thanks, man. Hey, Ayla, why are you soaking in that colorful conical hat? Oh, this old thing? I was just thinking maybe we could find a reason to celebrate. Ayla, you goofball, you crybaby, you insufferable maggot. We are celebrating. It's Interregnum, the week that time forgot. Nothing special or important ever happened on Interregnum, and that's why we celebrate. Really, Brian? You can't think of anything, or anyone, worthy of a little celebration today? Quit waving around that calendar, Ayla. Days have no place in Interregnum. Hey, the duck just stole Dave's shoe. You want to come chase it with us? Maybe later. Suit yourself, Madame Mopey Pants. Did they really all forget? Will this be the worst year yet? When a duck steals a shoe and steals the show. And as the night draws near, it's becoming clear that nobody here seems to know it's my hot dog kelly just stole dave's other shoe come on (laughs) 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 that dave what a card he really is 
What are you up to now, Stu? Oh, I was about to head out to the garden to see what Kate Sales is up to. You want to come? Sure. Wow, Kate Sales. You sure have grown a lot of vegetables here in the Beatnik Garden. Zucchini, squash, beans, even a bok choy. Ahoy, bok choy. Well, it's easy when you have healthy, nutrient-rich topsoil. And we have all we need here because of composting. <laughs> Come along on my composting journey. This is so exciting. I've never been on a composting journey before. I wonder if it has anything to do with interregnum. If you didn't know, Rhode Island Central Landfill is capped every day, and food doesn't decompose there. So composting is a great way to make use of the materials that would otherwise just sit in a pile in Johnston for all of eternity. This is my composter. It's a quad barrel oblong rolling unit built out of recycled cedar and hand cast stainless steel screws. Hand cast screws. Yeah, I have a small forge behind the potting table. I'll shut that. It's very hot. So, what are you putting there? Anything. Anything? I, I thought it was just food scraps. Well, that's part of it, but the most important factor is love. <laughs> then I add food scraps, cardboard, leaves, grass clippings, bottle caps, scratch tickets, motor oil, e-waste, wind chimes, squeaky toys, and junk mail. You've got mail. Doesn't that affect the soil quality? <laughs> as long as it's not spam. <laughs> One thing you shouldn't compost is meat products. Okay. So what are you adding today? Oh, well, this is my normal interregnum mix. Uneaten candy cans, dried out mistletoe, pine needles, outdated Christmas ornaments, and tarnished jingle bells. I was really expecting some jingling. Oh, well, these are too tarnished to jingle. If they still jingled, why would I be composting them, silly? <laughs> oh, Kate. Man, I really need to get over to this side of the compound more. You definitely should. We'd love to have you. Well, listen, Keith, it was great to see you twice in one day. Happy interregnum. I'm going to go try to teach Stapley how to catch a knife in his teeth. Oh, look out. Here comes Ayla. She's probably going to start singing again. Oh, hi, Ayla. Bye, Ayla. Oh, hey, Ayla. You seem markedly less frivolous than the other beatniks. What's wrong? Ugh. You wouldn't understand. Oh, come on, Ayla. Twas the season. Well, do you think that in the hubbub of the holidays, maybe you forgot someone's birthday? Nope. I remember Jesus' birthday back on the 25th. But now I'm just stuck with nothing to do. Oh. Glad I could help. See you later, Ayla. <laughs> much too close to Christmas for any additional cheer. Remember, oh remember, the 28th of December for a thousand other people and me. The decorations all go down round the 28th. This year, that day's trash day left to celebrate the garbage man gave me a 
Angela, can you bring the trash cans in? Oh, and happy birthday. She remembered! Ugh, what an insane day. And I still feel no closer to understanding what Interregnum is all about. Doesn't anybody know the true meaning of the holiday interregnum? Is there a meaning? Is human existence simply chaotic randomness? Or is there a greater purpose? On my knees, I beg you, if there is a true meaning to this season, please, I implore you, give me a sign. <laughs> Bells. I hear bells. I'll follow the sound. Dave's door? It's a sign. I'll knock. Dave! What Keith! What's the matter? You, you you look sweaty and spiritually forsaken. Dave, I asked the universe for a sign, and, and, and then I heard bells, so I followed them, and they led me to your rooms. Are you naked? Yes, except for these garlands of jingle bells with which I have adorned my body, see? But why are you naked except for jingle bells, Dave? It's a sex thing, Keith. Oh. It's called Reindeer Games. Would you like me to show you? Uh, maybe another time. D do you mind if I just come in for a of second? Of course. Make yourself at home. I'll just <clears throat> slip my robe on. Wow, Dave. Your rooms are really, really big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Seniority. Cognac. Oh, thanks. Hmm. That's really good. Oh, it's quite expensive. Now, what brings you to my room so late at night, smelling of sweat and terror and interrupting my reindeer games? I... I just... I just needed to know... Spit it out, man! What's the true meaning of the holiday interregnum? Oh, I see. Come with me. Where are we going, Dave? To the auditorium. You have an auditorium? Sure. Don't you? No. Huh. Well, seniority. Yeah, but I invented the show. Watch out! Whoa! Oh, you stepped in the koi pond. You have a koi pond? Here, take a hot towel out of the towel warmer. Wow. These are really soft, and they smell like... Is that cedar? It is. I have fresh Mediterranean cedar flown in every week just for my towel warmer. Almost there. Uh, uh, we just have to cut through the solarium. You have a solarium? Help yourself to a fresh oatmeal cookie. They just came out of the oven. This is so good, uh -huh. <laughs> I can't even eat them anymore. I just end up throwing most of them out. Donna just keeps making them. I think she's showing off. Donna? My pastry chef. You have a pastry chef? Keith, I'm sure all the beatniks have a pastry chef. I don't think so. Oh, here we are. Wow. You have... How many people can fit in this auditorium? Keith... It would be gauche to count. But roughly, uh, 1,200 ish. You have a 1,200 seat auditorium in your. Ah, uh, sit down. Oh, no. Mm, right in front there. Mm. Wow. These are. These are so comfortable. Well, the Sydney Opera House didn't think so, but I'm glad you do. Now, what was your question? My question is what is the true meaning of the holiday interregnum? That's a difficult question, Keith. A difficult question? 
I've been, I'm having an existential crisis, Dave, and I've been dragged through a koi pond and a sunroom solarium. and a solarium until I'm sitting here in this cavernous auditorium and you tell me it's a difficult question. Isn't there anyone who knows what the true meaning of the holiday interregnum is all about? Sure, Keith Munslow. I can tell you what the holiday interregnum is all about. Lights, please. Thank you. You have a lighting person? <clears throat> Tis the week after Christmas, but before New Year's Eve, when you can just stay home and not have to leave, eating leftover pie without leaving your bed, and blow through the last season of AMC's Walking Dead. While you lie back in sweatpants and scratch under your scrotum, you ponder your worries and cares, but just note them. When what to your mind should then promptly appear but anxieties, regrets, dread feelings, and fears? They crowd out serotonin and leave you a quiver, and you drink to forget them to the plight of your liver, and you find that you've spiraled, and now you're confessing to experiencing a debilitating seasonal depression. What is the reason? Is there purpose or meaning? Are we just here for nothing? Why can't I stop screaming? The sadness, so bottomless, like the pajamas you're wearing. But you no longer care about that ass that you're bearing. Because what is the point? You've long since forgotten, and all you can do is just keep feeling rotten. Jesus Christ, this is brutal. When all of a sudden you find a moment so clear... It gives you the strength to hang on one more year, an instant that shines like a star on a tree, or like the teeth of that guy that you saw on TV. A moment that leaves you floored and awestrucked when you realize that you can just say, Aw, oh, fuck it. Fuck everything right in its fucking dumb face. Fuck everything fucking all over the place. Stick it up everyone's ass and set it on fire and laugh as the flames burn higher and higher. Fuck it hard. Fuck it soft. Fuck it nice. Fuck it smelly. Fuck it all till it jiggles like a bowl full of jelly. This is the gift of this liminal week. This time between holidays smooshed cheek to cheek. You can go to the places where no one can follow deep in your heart and lie down and just wallow. Fuck giving. Fuck joy. Just lay down on your sofa and take a good long, long look between your knees at your bofa. Bofa? Bofa these nuts, Keith! This I exclaim with my thumb up my rectum. Leave me alone. This is my interregnum. And that's the true meaning of the holiday interregnum, Keith Munslow. So, I don't have to do anything? Nope. Or be anywhere? No. I just have to exist? Exactly. Just exist. That's all? That's enough. Happy Interregnum, Dave. Happy Interregnum, Keith. Now get the fuck out so I can get back to my reindeer games. Unless you'd care to join. I'd love to, but first I need to tell the other beatniks that I finally understand. I have to tell them. You don't have to tell us, Keith. We've been here the whole time. You mean, in my heart? No, dingus. We just walked over like a minute ago. But I didn't see you. We used the sky bridge. We have a sky bridge? Duh. So, you finally get it, huh? Interregnum isn't about finding meaning or truth. It isn't about accomplishments or success. It's about just getting by. And having a happy birthday. Not now, Ayla. We're having a moment. Sorry. Thanks, Beatniks. I love you all. Keith, when are we getting paid for this? Uh, uh, Dave, is that a Steinway concert grant? It is. It was a housewarming present given to me by the president of RCA Records. It's the same one Owen Bradley used. 
Wow, do you mind if I play it? By all means, happy interregnum, Keith. It's wet. <laughs> 